Being joyful isn't what makes you grateful. Being grateful is what makes you joyful. Gratitude is not only a response to God in good times, it's ultimately the very will of God in hard times. Gratitude isn't only a celebration when good things happen. It's a declaration that God is good no matter what happens. Busy is a choice. Stress is a choice. Joy is a choice. Choose well. The brave who focus on all things good and all things beautiful and all things true, even in the small, who give thanks for it and discover joy even in the here and now, they are the change agents who bring fullest light to all the world. It is in the dark that God is passing by. The bridge in our lives shake not because God has abandoned, but the exact opposite. God is passing by. God is in the tremors. Dark is the holiest ground, the glory passing by. In the blackest, God is closest, at work, forging his perfect and right will. Though it is black, and we can't see, and our world seems to be free-falling and we feel utterly alone, Christ is most present to us. There is unwavering peace today when an uncertain tomorrow is trusted to an unchanging God. Like the wind, grace finds us wherever we are and won't leave us however we were found. We give thanks to God not because of how we feel, but because of who he is. We can worship Christ in our sanctuaries, and we can pray to God on our knees, but how we treat or neglect the person next door, the poor, every human being, this is how we truly speak to Christ, and this is how we really treat Jesus. Instead of giving someone a piece of your mind, it turns out far better if you give them a piece of your heart. It's habits that can imprison you and it's habits that can free you. But when thanks to God becomes a habit, so joy in God becomes your life. Real joy is not found in having the best of everything but in trusting that God is making the best of everything. I don't want a Christmas you can buy. I don't want a Christmas you can make. What I want is a Christmas you can hold. A Christmas that holds me, remakes me, revives me. I want a Christmas that whispers, Jesus. We live in a broken world, and for the life of me I can't get it all right. But Jesus takes all our broken messes, and he makes them, by his grace, into a mosaic of grace. Joy is always a function of gratitude, and gratitude is always a function of perspective. Faith thanks God in the middle of the story. The practice of giving thanks. Eucharistic. This is the way we practice the presence of God, stay present to his presence, and it is always a practice of the eyes. We don't have to change what we see. Only the way we see. God's purposes are not for me to understand his plans, his plan is for me to understand who he is. We only enter into the full life if our faith gives thanks. Because how else do we accept his free gift of salvation if not with thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is the evidence of our acceptance of whatever he gives. Thanksgiving is the manifestation of our yes to his grace. The secret to joy is to keep seeking God where we doubt he is. Joy and pain, they are but two arteries of the one heart that pumps through all those who don't numb themselves to really living. We're not giving what we're called to give, unless that giving affects how we live affects what we put on our plate and where we make our home and hang our hat and what kind of threads we've got to have on our back. Surplus giving is the leftover you can afford to give. Sacrificial giving is the love gift that changes how you live, because the love of Christ has changed you. God doesn't want your leftovers. God wants your love overtures, your first overs, because he is your first love. And the earth under your feet, the rain over your face upturned, the stars spinning all around you in the brazen glory, this is for you, you, you. These are for you gifts, these are for you grace, these are for you God. So count the ways he loves, a thousand, more, 
never stop, that when you wake in the morning you can't help turn humbly to the east, unfold your hand to the heavens, and though you tremble and though you wonder, though the world is ugly, it is beautiful, and you can slow and you can trust and you can receive each moment as grace. A life contemplating the blessings of Christ becomes a life acting the love of Christ. When we lay the soil of our hard lives open to the rain of grace and let joy penetrate our cracked and dry places, let joy soak into our broken skin and deep crevices, life grows. How can this not be the best thing for the world? For us? The moment when you are most repelled by a child's behavior, which is your warning light to draw the very closest to that child. Motherhood is a hallowed place because children aren't commonplace. Co-laboring over the sculpting of souls is a sacred vocation, a humbling privilege. Never forget. I know there is poor and hideous suffering, and I've seen the hungry and the guns that go to war. I have lived pain, and my life can tell, I only deepen the wound of the world when I neglect to give thanks for early light dappled through leaves and the heavy perfume of wild roses in early July and the song of crickets on humid nights and the rivers that run and the stars that rise and the rain that falls and all the good things that a good God gives. You were made for the place where your real hash passion meets hash compassion because there lies your real purpose. Worry is belief gone wrong. Because you don't believe that God will get it right. But peace, peace is belief that exhales. Because you believe that God's provision is everywhere, like air. As long as thanks is possible, then joy is always possible. Your naked body deserves the honor of being shared only with someone who is covenanted to never stop loving your naked soul. I receive grace. And through me, grace could flow on. Like a cycle of water in continuous movement, grace is meant to fall, a rain again, again, again. I could share the grace, multiply the joy, extend the table of the feast, enlarge the paradise of his presence. I am blessed. I can bless. Holy joy lies in the habit of murmuring thanks to God for the smallest of graces. On the night he was betrayed Jesus broke bread and lifted it up and gave thanks. If Jesus can give thanks in that, can we not give thanks in all? What was intended to harm, God intended it all for good. And no matter what intends to harm you, God's arms have you. You can never be undone. You can give up the need to compete in the world when you accept being complete in Christ. How long does it take your soul to realize that your life is full? The slower the living, the greater the sense of fullness and satisfaction. When the heart and mind focus on things unseen, that's when there's a visible change in us. The cynics, they can only speak of the dark, of the obvious, and this is not hard. For all its supposed sophistication, it's cynicism that's simplistic. In a fallen world, how profound is to see the cracks? The sages and prophets, the disciples, and revolutionaries, they are the ones up on the ramparts, up on the wall pointing to the dawn of the new kingdom coming, pointing to the light that breaks through all things broken, pointing to redemption always rising and to the blazing God who never sleeps. The prayers we weave into the matching of socks, the stirring of oatmeal, the reading of stories, they survive fire. You've got to use the life you've been given to give others life. God reveals himself in rearview mirrors. And I've an inkling that there are times when we need to drive a long, long distance, before we can look back and see God's back in the rearview mirror. Maybe sometimes about as far as heaven that kind of distance. Eucharistic, thanksgiving always precedes the miracle. Only speak words that make souls stronger. Joy is the realest reality, the fullest life, and joy is always given, never grasped. God gives gifts and I give thanks and I unwrap the gift given, joy. 
Giving thanks is the making the canyon of pain into a megaphone to proclaim the ultimate goodness of God when Satan and all the world would sneer at us to recant. When you're most wounded by words run to the only word that always brings healing. I think God calls us to small things, to faithfulness right where we are, to just do the next thing. Pick up a yardstick to measure your life against anyone else's, and you've just picked up a stick and beaten up your own soul. Expose your life to real need. Visit a developing a country. Take a short-term mission trip. Write an inmate, send a letter to a sponsored child, serve in the inner city, at a food bank, with a crisis pregnancy center. Make time for shut-ins, the elderly, the sick, the single parents, the new believers. Just find one way you can make your awareness of your gift-graced life intersect with a real place of need, and Christ in us will do the rest. Every time I surrender to stress, aren't I advertising the unreliability of God? Gratitude is at the center of a life of faith. It sounds too simple to be true but isn't that the sign of all deep truth, so simple we're tempted to dismiss it, and so hard, it is exactly what God uses to change our hard lives. Girls rival each other. Women revive each other. Girls impale each other. Women empower each other. Girls compare each other. Women champion each other. Be radical about grace and relentless about truth and resolute about holiness. Research actually indicates that if you write down what you're grateful for, it increases your happiness by 25%. And who doesn't want that? And God's word says, 1 Thessalonians 5, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Who doesn't want to know exactly what God's will is for them? Our fall is always first a failure to give thanks. You, who were made by love, made for love be still and know and watch love come down. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.